So I think we can start. Uh, hello everyone, one more time. Uh, welcome to the webinar called Nail That Job Interview. My name is Godesh Virblite and I am an academic counselor at Student Affairs and Career Center Office at Vilnius University. Today I will be the moderator of this webinar, but before we start, I would like to remind you a few things. First of all, the webinar is organized by Student Affairs and Career Office. So if you are a Vilnius University student and if you are searching for job or internship or you have some study challenges, our career and academic counselors are always ready to help you. Uh, secondly, this webinar is part of a series called Time for Your Career. Uh, during it, representatives of Lithuanian and international companies share their, share their experiences and insights with Vilnius University students. So there is not only this event, but I suggest you to follow the whole series. Uh, today we will discuss differences between live and online interviews, things you have to prepare for the interviews. Also, you will learn how to answer situational interview questions and how to not make most common mistakes. After the webinar, you are very welcome to ask questions. Just write them in the chat and I will read them to our speaker. Also, I have to say that this webinar is recorded and will be available on Vilnius University YouTube channel soon. And finally, I am very happy to present you our speaker, uh, Ruta Marcinkevičiuta. She is group head of employer branding in my bank Luminar. So Ruta, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy to share my experience, my knowledge with you and help you to prepare for your upcoming interviews that you might have in upcoming weeks or, you know, in a year or at any time that you decide that you want to start looking for a job. So let me uh, first uh, fix all technical parts. So I would like to start sharing my screen and uh, Okay, let me know if you can see the slides. We can see the slides. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, so as uh, Gada mentioned, today I will uh, talk with you about how to nail that job interview that is upcoming for you. And uh, yes, so first uh, some heads up. So I have a dog in the room, so if you will hear some you know, noises, strange noise, strange noise, noises. So it might be my dog. So uh, I'm saying sorry already now for that. And uh, also sometimes I will be looking to my right because here I see you and there I see my slide. So I will be checking if this is the correct slide. So sometimes I will have my my attention to the right. Mm. Yes, so. Um, actually, God has shared with me some very good questions that you asked before the seminar. So I will answer part of them during the, the presentation and you will find the answers in the content that I will present. But some of them will uh, stay not answered. So I, I will be very happy to answer them at the end, uh, at the end of the presentation and also answer any additional questions that you might have. Um, Yes, so before going into all the details of how to prepare for the job interview and so on, I would like to quickly introduce myself so you know who I am and you know uh, my background. Uh, so I do have master de master's degree in human resources and management. Uh, I graduated from the London School of Economics and Political Science um, and I did my master's degree in London for one year. And after that, I came back to Lithuania to start my professional career. So as mentioned before, as Gada mentioned, currently I am head of employer branding at Luminor Group. So I'm uh, responsible for building and managing the employer brand. And before that, I worked as employer branding project manager and also as a talent sourcing specialist at Luminor. So 
while I was working as talent sourcing specialist, I was uh, doing all the talent acquisition tasks that, you know, a recruiter or sourcer does. So I was working with uh, interviews, with headhunting. So I really do know, you know, what recruiters are looking uh, when they are doing um, the interview and, you know, what makes a good interview and what makes a bad interview. And I'm very happy to share that with you today. So very, very shortly about me and uh, today's plan is um, this. So we will discuss how to prepare for the interview, then uh, what is important during the interview, and then we will cover video interviews because they are a bit different than regular ones. And when I say regulars, regular ones, I mean that face-to-face -face interviews that you go to the company, meet the person, and you uh, talk directly to, to the person. Yeah, so this is today's plan. And uh, first we will start with uh, preparing for the interview and what you have to do. So interviews are scary and can be scary. And uh, whether you're facing your first interview or your 20th interview, uh, you know, there is still uh, some nerves going around and, you know, feeling not maybe comfortable event enough and so on, so on. So, um, and where this, um, you know, from where these nerves come is usually, you know, from from the fact that you might receive some questions that you you are not prepared for, that you don't know the answers or you don't know how to answer it correctly. So unfortunately, I cannot, you know, make your nerves disappear by giving some tips or tricks, but I can help you to, um, you know, give you some tips that will help you to understand how to control your nerves and how to perform your best um, ability during the interview. And of course, how to ace that interview. So I will be sharing all those um, tips today. Okay, uh, yes, so the first step when uh, preparing for the interview is research. So you must do your, your research uh, because during the interview you will definitely receive uh, questions like why you applied for this job, why you want to work in this company, why do you think that this is a good fit for you, and so on, so on. So recruiter or hiring manager will be definitely checking, you know, your motivation to work here. So in order to answer the, those questions right, you have to find out as much as possible about the organization and the employer, in other words. So to find the information about the employer, you can go and visit their website. So usually there you will find, you know, um, their values, their culture, what it's like to work there, all this information that will allow you to kind of make an image what it's like to be in that company and what they as an employer offer to you. Uh, then uh, you can also read the, uh, their annual report, but this is more like for the roles I would say that are in, you know, more managerial level where you need to understand how the company is performing, is the company um, successful, is the company, you know, losing money, earning money, so on, so on. So you can also read that and understand more about the company. Uh, and also companies often have their missions, mission statement or key principles. So basically they explain, explain what is important for them and what is their mission. So this is also can be found usually on their, on their um, websites. And also you can, uh, you should look for what is the organization's long-term strategy. So where the company is going or aiming for. And if you don't find this information anywhere, I would say this is a very good question to ask at the end of the interview. So it really means that you, you are very much interested in the company and you want to know what are the ambitions of the company and what they are um, aiming for in the future. So Again, very important to do the research and uh, collect all this information that later uh, will allow you to answer those motivational questions um, in, 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 in very detailed and uh, 
just a um, good way. Then when you have all this information about the company, you know, you know what this company stands for, what are the values, then it's very important for you to know yourself and know the job. So what I mean when I say know yourself, so that you have to know in depth and basically inside out your CV and your application form and cover letter if you wrote one when you were applying. So it's very important for you to know what you put in your CV and if you already had um, a session on how to write a CV, you probably know that your CV has to be adapted adapted every time you apply for a new role because you need to apply to the job description uh, that you that you have. So make sure that you know your CV, make sure you know what you put there because you don't want to have a situation where a recruiter or hiring manager comes, asks you a question and says, oh, I see you have mentioned this experience in your CV and you are just suddenly lost because you forgot about putting this um, experience in your CV and then you're not prepared to answer that sort of the question. You start stressing out and then your, uh, you know, answer is not very consistent and, and very clear. Then uh, you have to think about, about this from interviewer's point of view. What areas may be unclear in your CV, how you would explain them in more details. What are your main strengths and weaknesses? And is there anything that wasn't mentioned in your CV, but is quite relevant for the role? Because when you will start, or if you already started your um, professional career and you know the more uh, employers you will change, the more experience you will gain, you will see that it's not possible to put everything in your CV. And probably you are aiming to have this one pager CV. So it's just impossible to put everything. So then you need to kind of think and go through in your mind what else could be relevant that is not mentioned. And uh, then you can definitely do that uh, during the, the interview. And then when we talk about knowing the job, so then um, you need to make sure that you know job description very well. So meaning you need to reread uh, person uh, specifications. So the skills, uh, qualifications, experiences, personal qualities that they are looking, uh, looking for. And then just think about the examples from your uh, personal experience. Um, that would demonstrate that you have the skills and the knowledge and qualities uh, needed for, for the role. Um, yes, uh, and then uh, the final step that I would really advise to do, so talk to someone uh, doing a similar job or someone who is working in the company because this will give you a very good insider information. So, you know, if if someone is doing a similar job, they can really share what is, you know, what is the most important skills, knowledge, um, qualities needed for the role for, for for the role, and in order to to really perform well during during your tasks. And then uh, it's also very good to speak with someone who already works in the company. So you really do get this real image of what is like to work there, what is the culture, you know, what is uh, the team about and so on, so on. The things that would later on help you to decide if you really want to be in the company. So uh, when you have um, all this research done and you know you know everything about the employer, you know yourself, your CV, you know the job description, you have um, a, a really good base of information to just start preparing for the answers um, that uh, and for the questions that you will receive during the interview. Um, and this is the key perform key to performing well alongside plenty of practices. So you need to prepare uh, for some questions that you know that you will get during the interview. Um, yes, and the better the better prepared you are, so the more comfortable and confident you will feel during the interview and the more relaxed you will be. 
So good interview answers are made up uh, of two key things. So first one is relevant content. Uh, so relevant content which you will have gathered when you do do the research um, during your preparation stage. So basically you will have all the relevant information to answer any question that you will get, for example, regarding why you want to work here, what skills and experiences you have that will help you to do and perform well in the role that you apply for. So this is, uh, you know, relevant content that you will have. Then um, structuring your answers, answers will help you to highlight the key uh, points you wish to make clearly and concisely. So when answering open ended questions uh, such as why do you want to work here? Uh, what makes you a good candidate? Select three or four uh, points and focus on those. You don't need to tell everything to recruiter or hiring managers. It's better to focus on key points uh, and uh, this will make also easier for for <clears throat> the recruiter to remember your answer. And then uh, when answering uh, behavioral or competency or situational questions, uh, you should use a star approach and uh, we will talk about star approach in the next slide. Sorry. Mm. Yes, so STAR approach or STAR method is a technique that you can use to prepare for behavioral or situational interview questions. So STAR stands for situation, uh, task, action and result. So basically when you get a behavioral question, um, then you, you should use the STAR approach. And after I will explain the STAR method, you will, I will also share some examples of behavioral questions so you can identify when you have to use this approach. So first, um, we start with the situation. So when you get a um, behavioral co competency question, you should start with um, setting the stage for the story um, by sharing the context around the situation or challenge you faced. And uh, in, in most cases, it's the best to describe um, relevant work situation, but if you don't have work experience yet, you can always, you know, share and discuss academic projects or volunteer work. So you should you shouldn't spend a lot of time here explaining the situation, uh, what you know, what what was the the situation. It, basically, you just need to mention it in the couple of the sentences because um, recruiter or hiring manager is mainly focusing on um, on the action and result part. And for that, you will want to spend the most time. But if if we need to give an example of situation, so from my perspective, me as a recruiter, for example, I could describe a situation like this. So in my last role as a recruiter, recruiter, there was a time when my team was short staffed. So meaning we didn't have enough colleagues to cover the whole workload and we we were facing a significant backlog of work and the managers that we worked with and we were hiring for them. Uh, we're setting unrealistic deadlines, which was causing, um, I don't know, my team to, you know, stress uh, and uh, they they were overwhelmed. So basically, this is uh, a quick example how you could describe the situation. If someone asks you a question, uh, you know, what was the um, challenge that you recently faced in your previous role and, uh, you know, how did you address it? So first you describe the situation. What was the situation from where this challenge came? <clears throat> then we have the task. So um, basically with the task, you describe your responsibility or role in that situation or that challenge. And um, yeah, in other words, you would just describe uh, the goal or task that was set for you in that situation. Mm. And again, this uh, this uh, section doesn't require much of your time, so you can just 
very, very shortly mentioned. So if coming back to the situation that we had uh, as an example and me being as a recruiter, so I would continue with the task, for example, in this way. So um, as a recruiter, it was my role to ensure and communicate with the hiring manager and set their expectations right regarding the timeline, deadlines and attention that they will receive from me as supportive recruiter. So this is was this was my task in that situation. And we go to action. Uh, so action helps you to explain the specific actions that you took to handle the challenge, to handle the situation. And um, this is one of the most important parts of this um, star approach. And here you want to spend uh, way more time that you spent on uh, describing the situation or task and you want to give really in-depth description of what actions you take to solve the, the challenge that you had. So yes, here you would, uh, would have to select, um, I don't know, uh, select few of the most imp impactful steps that you took to find uh, the success in this uh, challenge and just describe them. So an example to the story that you were building could be that um, uh, I, as a recruiter, uh, set up a timeline estimates to set better expectations of the hiring managers and schedule weekly meetings uh, with them to share the progress updates. So in that case, we make sure that everyone is on the same page and then you know, uh, everyone is satisfied with the services and the 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 the, the outcomes. Uh, I'm very shortly just giving sh short examples. So this is not how much time you should spend on it. You should spend way more time uh, on it. Uh, give uh, examples in more depth, but I just want to give you some examples so you know, you know what it could sound like and on what you should focus. Then we have result. So result again is very important part, almost as important as an action. So therefore you should also focus quite a lot here and spend a similar amount of time as you spent in describing what actions you took. So when we talk about results, so uh, you need to explain what outcome you reach through your actions. Mm. Um, yeah, so this uh, this also um, here you can also you know choose two or three most impressive results and talk about this. So how your actions affected the way how you work now or how you handled the challenge. And um, uh, if continuing with the example, so I could say that um, by providing a more transparent and um, uh, yeah, more transparent communication and setting better expectation. Uh, I was able to reprioritize re the recruitment, make sure that the most urgent ones are uh, done the first, and uh, I learned how to, how important it is to communicate uh, clearly across the teams and across across the people that you work with. So this is how how the start approach works. So when you get situational behavioral question like um, share an example of a time when you faced a difficult problem at work and how did you solve this problem? If you get this question, you start using start approach. You describe situation, um, you describe your task, you explain what actions you took to to solve the to overcome the challenge and then what the, what the results were of your actions. Other examples could be uh, questions like, have you ever had to make an unpopular decisions? How did you handle it? Uh, describe a time when you were under a lot of pressure at work. How did you react? Um, also often uh, recruiters ask how people react to stress and how they overcome the stress. Um, Tell about the mistake you have made. How did you handle it? So such questions that are definitely not, you know, one one word answer you should approach with 
star approach. Uh, and uh, this is one of the common mistakes and things that we are missing as recruiters and hiring managers getting, you know, answers that would uh, consist of real life uh, experiences and examples of the of the person who who is looking applying for the job and uh, not having a very um, what is the word um, structured way of answering it and uh, in this case star approach will really help you to do that because usually when you ask uh, I don't know how do you deal with the stress um, people just oh answer like oh if I would face a lot of stress at the work I probably would do that 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 and this would help me to 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 solve that situation but what we really want to hear is what you actually did in the past to overcome that challenge and what were the results so use your real life experiences and uh, and use it in the structured way and a star approach will really help you to do that in, in such way. Yes, so the first part is done. So basically you are ready for the interview. So remember you have to um, do the research, you have to prepare for the answers and you need to practice your answers as well. So how you can practice them. So it's very good to kind of uh, simulate the interview. So it means that you can take your friend, your family member and ask them to interview, interview you and ask some questions so you can answer them. So this will really help you to kind of, you know, prepare for that and uh, be way more relaxed during your, your interview because the main work is the preparation and the, uh, how well you prepared will really have an impact on how well you do during your job interview. And now we can we can move to the job interview part. Yes. Um, there are some top tips to 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 use for 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 the interview. I know that they might sound cliche or something, but it really helps. So first, don't worry. And what I mean, don't worry. So look at the job interview as a conversation. It's it's not interrogation. It's not like, you know, there is only good or wrong answer. It's not like, you know, you have to be, you know, you are not taking lie, lie detector or anything. So just relax. Think, think of it as a conversation. And there is nothing wrong if you don't pass the interview stage. Um, there will be many other interviews in the future and jobs as well. Uh, and I would suggest you to take that that interview that you failed as a lesson and example. So if you after the interview, I would suggest to do reflection to think which which um, answers, which questions were hard to answer for you and then think how in the next interview that you might have tomorrow, how you would answer it if they ask that question. So take it as a lesson and you know this will definitely help you to be better uh, in your next time. Then it's um, the tip that you have to interact effectively. Um, and what I mean by that is that um, uh, a large uh, part of recruiters decision making um, is formed by nonverbal um, nonverbal clues and interactions while they talk with you. So basically how you act, how you interact with people that you meet in the office if you go for, for the um, office interview, how relaxed you are, how yourself you are and how polite you are is very important. So um, yeah, don't forget to keep an eye contact uh, during the interview. It doesn't mean that you have to stare to the face to to the person in front of you all the time, but just you know keep the eye contact. Try to be polite. Uh, keep the small talk. It's always nice to have a little small talk before the interview and just again relax and think think about the interview as a conversation, not like interrogation. And then um, the second thing as genuine questions. So genuine questions really shows that you are motivated and you are interested in the job. 
uh, and that you really want to know more about the company, about the position, what it's like to work there. So before asking the question, you can always think if it's really important for you. So for example, if I ask, uh, you know, um, uh, um, what is the culture at the company or how, how does the uh, um, team communicate or, you know, what is the size of the, of the of the team will you be working with someone else will you be working on your own these all these all these questions are really relevant for you to to understand you know what like the environment will where you will work and that this will dev definitely help you to make a decision if you want to work here so always ask the questions that are re really important for you and that uh, after you get that job offer uh, will help you to make a decision if this is the right place for you or not. And also you can ask the questions, uh, for example, if you didn't find the answers uh, in, in their websites or there's some still unclarities about the role and what you will be doing. So this is also a good, a good question to ask. And uh, also when answering to, to, the, to the questions uh, that you receive, it's good to be concise and focused. So you need to understand that you only have 45, sometimes an hour usually is 45 minutes for the interview. And uh, you want to be mindful of the time that you have. So you need to, for that, you have to practice your answers before the interview and make sure that you give the answers in the structured way. They are still very, um, you know, clear, detailed, but they are not too long or not, you know, not focused. So this is very important. And again, use a STAR approach for behavioral competency questions. This is, you know, a game changer, I would say. If you can explain, uh, answer the question, in a very uh, focused and uh, clear way by giving examples from your experiences. Really, you give a lot to, to the manager and to the recruiter. Um, yes, then video interview. Um, so now that we are, you know, living during the COVID time, I'm working remotely. Uh, recruiters are also usually working remotely. So most of the interviews are now happening remotely as well. So major majority of like the whole preparation part is completely the same uh, as, as you would do for the real face-to-face -face interview. Uh, it's just that, you know, you don't get to meet the person in real life. Uh, then it's also harder to kind of um, judge on your um, behavior, how you present yourself um, rather than if you meet the person in life. So here are some tips for, for the video um, interview. So if you take a video interview, of course, then you need to choose and check your device carefully. And what I mean here, so uh, when you will be invited for the interview, you will definitely get this, uh, you know, link through which you will be joined and you will have to use a device. So you can use your phone, your computer. computer. So imagine if you decide to use your phone, then it means that you probably you will have to hold it in your hand. Uh, you know, you won't be clearly, you won't be able to see the, the recruiter's face clearly. Um, so it might be uncomfortable for you. So just choose the device that is really, really, really comfortable for you. It could be laptop, it could be uh, you know, a tablet or the phone if it really works for you. So just make sure that it works for you. Uh, and also make sure that, you know, the the device is fully charged or is on, on or it is on charging cable so it won't die in the middle of your interview. Then uh, you have to find the right space. Uh, so you need to find the space somewhere quiet so there is no background noises. Um, and uh, that you have a good lightning. So uh, we had really many cases where the light lighting is not 
that good. You barely can see the person's face and you really do want to have this, you know, conversation as normal as possible and not seeing the person is it's making a bit difficult to do that. Um, yes, yeah, so so the the uh, the some somewhere quiet and also with the good lightning. Then uh, before the interview, you should check the app platform or URL that uh, was provided to you. So uh, sometimes you have to download the app before before accessing the video interview. So please make sure that you do that pre or the interview because you don't want to be in in the situation where you have, for example, an interview at four and you decide, OK, it's uh, 359. I will join now and you see that now you need to um, download your, the app. Maybe your device does not support the app. Then what do you do? And you end up being late five or seven minutes to the interview. And this is the time, your time that you have wasted and uh, you know you won't be able to get um, uh, in order to present yourself better and uh, you won't probably have uh, that much time to also ask the questions that you wanted to ask uh, at the end of the interview. Um, yeah and here I will repeat again a couple of things that were already mentioned before so as during the normal interview face-to-face uh, -face interview um, during the video interview. Again, for you, it's very important to reflect on the skills uh, that company re employer requires. So again, a reminder to review the job description and um, see what they're looking for, what skills, what competences, experiences, and, uh, and then make sure that you have examples for that when answering the questions. Uh, be able to demonstrate business industry knowledge. Someone has a question? Okay, just someone maybe unmuted themselves. Uh, then uh, if, if to continue, so it's important to be able to demonstrate business and industry knowledge. And this is again the information that you get during the preparation. And uh, yeah, finally, know your motivation. And again, this is preparation part. So um, know why you want to join the company. Why, no, sorry, know why you applied. Know why this is a good fit for you as well. Because I am 100% sure that this, this will be one of the first questions that you receive during any interview that you will take. And then also keep a notebook uh, or a glass of water next to you. So notebook is good for you to write down something when you hear during the interview when they explain the role, what you will do. So uh, you can just um, wrote it down for yourself or you can also, you know, put some notes for yourself. So for example, you know that you still sometimes struggle to answer questions with the star approach, you can, you know, write it down for yourself. What are the steps uh, to answer in that way? And then water. So of course, you know, you will be talking for around an hour, so you probably will get thirsty and you would like to have some something to drink. So these are the tips for the video interviews. And that's it. Uh, I'm ready for your questions. I'm ready to answer answer the questions that I already received. But um, yeah, maybe I will shortly before the questions touch upon, uh, you know, the most common mistakes. So one of the most common mistake is that people come to the interview not prepared with the answers why they want to join this company, why they want to why they decided to apply. Uh, so basically lacking motivation. So this is very important. Um, then um, yes, not giving real uh, experience examples. Uh, what I mentioned with the star approach. So you need to give real examples what you did in the past, not what would you do if you had this uh, situation. Um, so real examples, but if you face that, you know, 
they ask the question about some kind of situation and for example you never been in that situation so then i would clearly state so i've never been in this situation but if i would happen to appear in this situation i would probably do this and this and this based on my previous experience and knowing that this really helps in similar situations uh, what else? Uh, also, a mistake not to not to ask any questions at the end of of the interview. Uh, this again kind of destroys um, your motivation, and uh, it means that you didn't didn't think through all of this before the interview, and you are not so interested in in the position, maybe, or you lack motivation. So also think of at least a couple of the questions. Um, a good question uh, also that will help you to understand why people join, join the company. You can ask recruiter or, uh, or hiring manager why you decided to join the company, what you love the most about working at that company. So these are like very general questions to ask if you don't have anything specific. Um, yes, uh, I think these are the main, 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 main um, mistakes um, that comes to my mind now. Um, yeah, so questions, any questions that you have at the moment I can answer or should I go through the list that we already have? I have a few questions. Can I ask? Yeah, yeah of course. Hi. OK, hi, uh, my name is Omlan. I'm doing a master's in quality management. OK, so I had a few questions. One is uh, typically what is uh, uh, the duration of a, the recruitment cycle? Mm -hmm. That is my first question. My second question is uh, what do you suggest for people with uh, like probably who are who have uh, loads of experience already? So my background, the point and where I'm coming from is I have a huge amount of experience already. I'm taking a break and I then and I after this I plan to get into the market again, job market mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So for example, I mean, one problem I think I have and because I have actually been looking out already and one problem I face is that my. Work experience. Generally, I have found that it kind of it's much more than most what most positions advertise for, are looking for. Mm -hmm. So that is something I'm trying to understand. Uh, what do you what would you suggest for this? Mm -hmm. So basically. Uh, facing the issue that someone might think that you are overqualified for the position. Exactly. Or, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that, yeah, that's the point here. Yeah. OK, so uh, starting with the first question, so the duration. So I would say it's a bit different to each company. So if you would look in the in the market, you will see that, for example, for one company, it might take one month for the other. It could be two months because they have some extra steps in their recruitment process, such as oh, like okay. shadowing in one day shadowing with the final candidate, so on, so on. But usually it is around six weeks on average. So okay. it's usually six weeks. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, to the to the second question, how not look to overqualified. So again, it's very important when applying to go through your like go through the job description, see what they're looking for and then pick from your experience the things that kind of confirms that you have experience in that. So this is kind of just adjust and take um, those aspects of your experience that are the most important for that role. Mm -hmm. So this this uh, this I would use in the very first stage of you know sending your CV and making sure that you will go through the selection process. Not sorry, not selecting, but CV screening process. So yeah. Okay, so uh, the last question is, for instance, so because oh, I am asking this because I have applied for a few places and I have uh, appeared for a few first round interviews, but then I have not heard back either way. Whether it's uh, whether I got through, whether I didn't get through. 
So after the first round, uh, do you suggest uh, that we uh, is it OK to kind of uh, reach back to the recruiter or hiring manager and check what is the status? Yes, yeah, so it's always nice to kind of after the interview send a short message saying thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Looking forward for for the update. I also suggest to ask at the end of the interview when you can expect to get an answer for them. And for example, if they say we will come back within two weeks and mm -hmm. if you didn't hear from them after two weeks, then it's completely fine for you to Right, write an right, email yeah. and say, hey, you said I would get an answer by now, but uh, there mm -hmm. is nothing that I heard from you. Maybe you can update me. Yeah. Okay. So this is completely fine. fine. Thank you. No worries. Anything else? Yeah, hi. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, the question is about already mentioned some that Goha said. Uh, we are from different countries for for this, uh, Lithuania is completely new and uh, the job market as well. So uh, if you had past experience in your field, but in, in here, uh, if you try for like um, uh, in entry level jobs and uh, are of course too familiar with this environment, uh, if you appear to an internship, since you were doing most uh, masters, I'm, uh, I myself talk about if I say mm -hmm. I'm master's final year, so um, too familiar with the uh, uh, company here, organization here. If I apply for the master's, uh, sorry, for internship or uh, uh, in an entry level job, but I have uh, vast experience in the field where I'm looking for what I'm looking for. So what would you say in this case? Uh, is that my um, best uh, job experience or be a block uh, would be a, a um what to say uh, mm -hmm. yeah. so basically you are saying so, that you already have a lot of experience in the in the field and the role that you're applying for but the role that you apply for is junior level is that correct yeah it's like the entry level mm -hmm. or uh, the first phase of the arc to get access in the organizations in that mm -hmm. organizations so in that case you know, I would think that you didn't read through the, the, the job description and probably you didn't really understand it because I can see that you're definitely overqualified. But then if, you know, I would have some similar position in the same area, which is senior, then probably I would suggest you as a recruiter proactively saying, I think you're a better fit here and let's talk about this role. But um, yeah, so this would be my first um, thought that maybe you kind of I would be surprised why a person with extensive experience applies for a junior role. Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, also uh, uh, you are right. Uh, as I said before that um, the, this environment is completely new and you don't know all the um, behavioral or organizational behavior of this. Uh, local community or the mm -hmm. uh, where are you from uh, recruiting how mm -hmm. the app, how the market but, is but mm -hmm. then if you are applying for international company this is this shouldn't be uh, a problem for them that you are not a local person and uh, you don't have this you know knowledge of about the local culture ways of working because you know international companies don't have uh, you know those very specific how to say like yeah it's it's kind of it shouldn't be a problem for them okay we have one more question so please mm -hmm. ask your question i see paul has a question he raised the hand yeah hello good evening thank you for so much information and um i wanted to ask about is it possible to convince an employer to let you work part time for a full time job? And how do you do it? Because in my own case, I had a scenario whereby I got an offer, but they wanted me to work full time, of which I'm in the second year of my bachelor. So I was either going to quit my studies or 
forget about the job of which I had to forget about the job what it was quite mm -hmm. painful because it was like a really good job offer and I was told to call them back but I never did so I don't know how do you convince such offer as in such employer that you can because the task was really quite of kind of easy for me I could have done it part time mm -hmm. so first of all what you have to make sure that the company offers flexible working environment, meaning that it's not like you have to come to the office, uh, log in at eight and log out uh, at five. So if they are, if they have like flexible working environment, then you can start suggesting that, you know, probably on Mondays, I won't be present at my computer by from one o'clock to three o'clock, but then I will do all the work that is needed to be done by that day, you know, um, early in the morning before the working hours or after the working hours. And you just kind of need to play on that, that you can really do good time management that, you know, you will, you know, your studies won't affect, um, you know, your results at the work. And uh, basically, yeah, just say that, you know, you will probably then work after regular working hours. And if this is okay for the, for the company, uh, so then I think that should be fine because um, we have, for example, flexible working hours and just talking from my own experience. So as long as, I deliver my, you know, tasks and my my goals on timely manner. No one cares if I work from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. instead of, uh, you know, 2, 2 p.m. to uh, 4 p.m. So it's it's my own basically choice when I am the most product productive and I can, you know, um, prioritize and uh, kind of manage my own time and task as long as I meet the deadlines and deliver what is expected. I hope I answered the question. So basically just make sure that this is a flexible working environment and then try to play on that, that you will be uh, missing maybe one or two hours, but then you will be, you will compensate that a bit later and you will meet the deadlines. Yeah, thank you. Actually, it was over an hour conversation, but I was unlucky. Yes. Mm. Okay. Next time. <laughs> Next question is from Diana. Yes, hello. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your presentation. It was really nice. Thank you for sharing this information. And I have uh, two questions to you. Our uh, first one is about um, interviews that um, mm, are conducted by two people. So I know that when you're hiring for some like really important position, you can be uh, interviewed not only by uh, like interviewer, but also for, of, uh, I know, for example, the head of department. Mm -hmm. So my question is, um, is there any difference between uh, like a usual interview and uh, how I need, how should I uh, uh, conduct and present myself in this type of interview? Um, second question is um, about uh, like, um, um, not from my personal experience, but I have heard from friends that sometimes when they came to interview, the uh, HR manager can ask them about uh, working uh, not only in the according to work schedule, but like overwork. And uh, the HR manager can ask if it's okay for you to work uh, like more overtime. than is, uh, yeah, over time. Uh, so like, I personally don't like uh, this idea. So how I need to deliver my position in ecological and in polite way. Mm -hmm. And uh, third final question, sorry for that much of question, yeah. is that uh, um, like, for example, there is a situation when I have some experience, like the thing is that I'm a law student and uh, you know, there are a lot of branches in law and everything. So um, 
in past I was con uh, I was working in uh, for example human rights field but now I understand that I want uh, to work more in a business field mm -hmm. and I actually don't have a lot of experience so how I also should uh, correctly um, explain why I decided to switch from one field to another field and uh, which things I need to mention because I understand that you know I cannot like um, depend uh, I cannot depend on my previous experience because because it won't be appropriate so uh, on which things I should concentrate maybe it would be I don't know my will uh, to pursue in this field of law maybe my motivation something like that thank you no uh, just uh, putting some notes for myself quickly um, okay so the first question thank you for the questions very good questions so um yes there are many times and situations where you are interviewed by more than one person or then you are uh, interviewed at the end by the head of department because he also has a this or she they have a decision making in 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 the process so um usually how it works so usually we you you will um face that the first interview will be with um recruiter and the hiring manager so in such case recruiter will focus more on uh, motivational questions personality uh assessment uh you know um situational questions and then the hiring manager will focus more on the hard skills and your experience uh, and then um, and then at the end you will have some at the very end you might have um, an interview with the head of department um, who will also want to hear some something about your experience why you want to work here and so on so on so I really don't think that you have to conduct yourself in any different way that you did in your very first interview first of all uh, you know um, hiring manager recruiter will definitely be sharing their uh, feedback with the head of department say what what you were like during the interview what are your strengths weaknesses so basically the the head of department as an example will have quite an image of you already before going to to the interview with uh, with you so if you appear as a completely different person, so for example, if during the first interview you were, uh, I don't know, a bit maybe impolite, maybe, you know, um, I don't know, more outspoken than you are with the head of uh, head of department, then they will see that kind of you are faking one of in one of the uh, one of the ways. So I would suggest you to continue be yourself uh, also when speaking with a very important person in the company you know it's only a person so be relaxed and you know don't get um, get don't let it go into your head because then you will start stressing out and you know have difficulties to answer very simple questions um, then um, about the overtime, so um, if you don't like to do the overtime, but you already know that at some times you will have to do it. So I think you have to very clearly say that, you know, you are, I think you sh still should be ready to do the overtime in the very critical, you know, situations of your work. So when there is no other way to, you know, to, to finish the project and you very much have to meet the deadline. So I would say that, yes, uh, I can do overtime, but when it's very critical and, you know, when the whole team has to just step up and, you know, do an extra work. Uh, but then you should also probably say that you expect to be paid for that because the common, um, common, uh, common, uh, agreement uh, and the way how it's done so you are paid for the overtime but then you should also say that this should be only in very specific and uh, um, you know extraordinary kind of situation and you are looking for the work-life balance and you you would not like to do the 
you know, over time all the time. So just I would approach it in such way if this is, you know, acceptable for you. I'm just explaining that in very extraordinary or extraordinary situations, you are ready to do it uh, in order to kind of support the whole team. Um, does it the is it uh, a good answer or or <laughs> did I answer yeah, the, your very, question? Okay. Yeah, it's very fine. Thank you. Please continue. Uh, then, uh, yes. Yeah, so if you're thinking to change the field that you are want to work in, and for example, you worked with human rights and now would like to be more focused into business field. So if you are still, especially while you are still a student, I think it's everyone understands that you are taking different experiences in order to find the one that really is interesting for you and you have passion for it. So simply if you try to apply for a different industry or you know area, but so then explain what what are the main things that kind of you were missing in the previous role that you had? Uh, what what was maybe not so interesting for you? What you found out that this is not your not your passion, and then you know try to kind of elaborate on why you think that this area is really interesting interested for you. Um, and the support, you know, from where this interest comes. So maybe you read different articles about that area. Maybe you you talk with the person who is doing something similar and then just say, you know, what skills you already have from your past experience that is that are quite universal and would really suit this um, this this area that you want to try out now. So I think as I said, while you are a student and even after you have more experience, it's completely OK to, you know, switch your area and and kind of, you know, uh, explore something new. So this shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't think of it as a as of uh, a bad thing because, you know, we do we the experience we learn and then we realize if it's for us or or, or not. Or maybe you just after 10 years get bored of the thing that you do and you want to switch. So it's also very normal. Um, yeah, I think I think I answered all three questions. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. No worries. I just want to check with you, Ruta. Do we have any more time to, to answer more questions? Uh, let me quickly check. Yeah, we have uh, we have uh, Book, book this meeting for uh yeah still half an hour to go okay i'm just checking with you yeah. i'm very sorry if i don't say your name correctly but nadia it's your time to ask your question uh thank you uh hello uh, my question is uh, about uh, how to correctly and delicately explain to the interviewer about why did you leave your uh, uh, last job? Because you know sometimes it happens that you perform well at your job, you don't have any conflicts with colleagues, but still there are some working conditions that you don't like and you decide to leave and mm -hmm. to change the company. So how to explain it correctly and not to give uh, the impression that you are a conflict person and you do not uh, uh, and you're not a team player uh, so first of all a big no no is to go on the interview and start trashing about your current or pre previous em employer so you shouldn't go like oh uh, sorry for my language but oh it was such a you know shitty place to work they the manager did that, she, she, he did that, and you know, just going and complaining and talking trash. This is a, not a good approach. No one wants to have an employer, employee who is capable of that after leaving the company and going just talking around and spreading really, really bad, bad words. So what is a good approach to explain why you are changing um, the organization? So usually people change uh, the organization because they feel that it's time for them to explore 
something new. Uh, they feel like they got everything from current employer and, you know, they they need more challenges. They, they want to gain a bit, uh, you know, s some new experiences. So I would go from um, these um, these perspectives perspectives and first think think to yourself why you are looking for for a new employer why you are changing the job and you know if these reasons are you know very simple ones and uh, it's it's okay to share and then for example if you're leaving the employer because the work conditions very good you can also say that uh, in a polite way, saying that for you it's important to work for an employer who cares about their employees, who who look after them, and uh, you were kind of lacking this uh, in your current employment, and you would like to work for a bit different employer, and then you know you could say that I see that your company uh, it's very mindful about employees' well-being. Uh, you saw in the social media, you are you have great benefits, and this is what I was missing in my current employer. So this is also could be an approach that you take. So yeah. Thank you. No worries. Okay, Alexander, you are up. Please ask your question. Okay, thank you very much. And Ruta, thank you very much for um, lecture. Um, very nice and interesting points I wrote down for myself for the future. Uh, really important. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding um, academic qualifications, academic life in general, and how um, it can be relevant during the interview for since, you know, uh, we're applying for a job, right? And uh, um, how how basically all these academic achievements uh, or academic research that uh, uh, um, I've, I, for example, done during the, my studies uh, should be emphasized. So it should be an important aspect or rather than just mentioned briefly. And uh, yeah, maybe a follow up question. I don't know uh, if, for example, you said that employers looking for uh, real life examples, real life experience, uh, rather than, than talking about achievements, should we focus on uh, the process of how it was achieved? For example, time management, working with the team uh, group mates or and, uh, something similar to it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, could you cl uh, clear clarify your second question one more time? Uh, yeah, the second question is about uh, Again, finding this correlation between uh, um, achievements and process, how it was achieved. So, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. employer hiring managers looking for, um, well, they would love to hear some real life examples. And rather than talking about what I've done in the academic field, uh, should it be mentioned more about how it was achieved or again, how, how, how in general, all these academic achievements should be mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, so first question about the education and your achievements in education, how to use it in the interview and uh, in your CV. So uh, just to double check with you. So are you asking about the situation when you don't have any relevant work experience or are you talking about situation when you already have it and how important it is to also elaborate on your education and experience that you gained through the education. Yeah, rather um, I would say the first uh, uh, the first situation uh, that um, you know while well, during during my studies I don't have really lots of time to to work to yeah. apply for a job and I fear that after finishing them or during mm -hmm. the process of writing master theories uh, when I would love to apply I won't have any relevant job experience and I would like yeah. you know I would have to suck it out of the finger just to find something mm -hmm. <laughs> to tell okay. to the hiring manager. So again, uh, if you don't have any work experience, you will probably be applying for a junior position. So meaning that, you know, uh, you know, recruiter hiring manager won't be really kind of, you know, expecting you to come to, to the job interview as a junior person and have all this extensive work related 
you know, um, experience. So it's completely normal that you will you will talk about your ed education, about the experience that you gained through your education and how to use it. So again, uh, read through the job description, uh, see what they're looking for, uh, see what competencies, skills, uh, personal qualities they're looking for and try to find the examples from your edu educational experience. Uh, other thing is also very important if you're an active person, if you are a motivated person, you are, you know, maybe not working, you're doing, but you are doing some volunteering stuff. Maybe you are um, involved in some university activities, I don't know, student council, anything. You can also share those experience. Uh, also share the experience which shows that during your studies you 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 did an extra step to uh, know one or other area in more depth. So for example, if you're studying finance, you are interested in kind of investments topic, so maybe you joined uh, some sort of the club, maybe you, you know, um, took an extra extra course somewhere else about it. So use all these opportunities to show your motivation, your interest, interest in area, and also, you know, the experience that you get, gain during the university are also very valid. So um, you you gain some analytical thinking, exp, you know, uh, skills, you time management skills, you can play on that saying that you, you were writing your master um, degree, uh, master thesis, and meanwhile you were doing that and that as a volunteering, so your time management. Um, so yeah, I would I would approach it like that. Um, I don't know, did I answer the question or should I elaborate a bit more? No, I think I think I, I got the, the mm -hmm. right answer for, for myself. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. And then about uh, the second question was about talking about the achievements or more how did you, uh, you know, ended up in those having that achievement. So what did you do? So I think it's very important to mention both of it. So it's not only the the end result that matters. It's also it, your actions matters and how you approach it matters. So mm, you can you can elaborate during the interview yourself on that. So how you ended up having such result, what you did, uh, did you work with the team? How did you work with the team if you worked in, in the team? But also usually a recruiter will ask a follow up question on that as well. So if you if you will miss out, then probably they will ask you, but again, I would say that that star approach will really help you to answer in such way that it's no, not only that your experience is not only described by the achievement that you have, the result, but also by your actions, how you did that. So um, I would very much use that star um, method to, to get a very good and also you know, um, answer that would uh, give uh, information about both parts of it. Okay, yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. No worries. Okay, next question is from Shirin. Ask your question. Hello, hi, thank you for your time. Okay, uh, I have two questions as well. I'm coming from a different background, education and work experience. I was in working six years in Malaysia on uh, advertising, and then I decided to extend my knowledge in marketing as well. So I'm uh, learning marketing, master marketing now. And the thing is, um, actually when i want to uh, find a job i don't know which uh, position should i search for because i want to learn and work in marketing areas but uh, i am not suitable exactly for the job description that they give me so mm -hmm. it's really a challenge for me i don't know should i uh, start from a junior or um, what and your previous experience was can you repeat uh working in advertising Mm -hmm. Yes. And 
there was nothing related to marketing or was there something? Uh, yes, a part of it. But when I uh, read the job descriptions now, when I'm looking for the job, there are um, more uh, things that they want me to have, more factors that I'm not, I'm not able to cover all of them. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just uh, semester one of marketing yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's uh, hard to give you one answer to that. Uh, it really depends on organizations' flexibility and what they're looking for. I myself, and I, if I was in your situation, I would try both. I would actually... You know, if you see that the job ad requires a bit more than you have, you know, when it comes to the knowledge and skills, but it's not like, you know, you are here and then the you are here and the requirements are here. So if it's not too big of the gap, I would still go for, for, um, for the, for the, uh, for for the interview and then, you know. Um, yeah, because many times, you know, they put into, into the job description so many things that you have to have, but actually there are three or four main things that are very crucial for the role. So usually it's okay not to have everything what is written, but it's very important to have those key things that are relevant. And if you are very much uh, focusing on marketing now, probably you might already know what are those key needed things or then if you have um, managed to get an interview you can ask a question what are the main qualities uh, skills that you are looking for and that you wouldn't hire a person without those Uh, so if you have all of them so you can deliver and on the others you can just kind of during your onboarding your first three months you can catch up and learn them so I would if there is not too big of the gap I would apply and try to figure it out if you have the key skills for that role yeah okay thank you and uh, another question is if I they basically they ask me what is your expectation on the salary what are the factors like how so, can I come yeah, up with the, the main- suitable yeah, so one of the main reasons why they ask this is to, to understand if, you know, if their range is from 2000 to 3000, for example, and your expectation is 4000. So then it means that, you know, there is nothing that they can do because they don't have a budget for for that sort of the salary. So they just want to make sure that you are on the same page and that you fit in into the ranges. And in Lithuania, it's mandatory to put um, the ranges uh, in the job ad. So if you will open the job ad, you will see that uh, companies say we offer from 1, 1K to 2K. And then it's um, you know a decision made according to the skills experience that you have. So yeah, so as long as you fit into the, into the, into the, into the um, ranges it's completely fine and you know we don't choose a person according to their uh, salary expectations so for example if you say that you want 2000 and i come and say i want 1500 but i'm you know not as good of not as good as you are for the position they won't choose me just because i say that i can work for 1000 1,500. They will definitely choose you because you have the competencies and then you you still fit into the salary ranges. Okay, thank you so much. And the last question is from Han. Han, you can ask her question. Okay, maybe it was an accident, <laughs> a raising in a hand. Maybe it was. Uh, so as I can see, we have no more questions and the time is almost up. So I would like to thank you very much, Ruta. It was very interesting. Uh, and 
Thank you for being with us today and sharing your experience and insight. insights. As we see, we had lots of questions uh, and it's a very important topic for Venus University students. Uh, unfortunately, we have to stop here, but I, will, I would like to remind you one more time that Venus University Career Center provides consultations for Venus University students and alumni. So if you have questions about CV and job interviews or we haven't answered the questions that you have uh, asked today, so don't be shy to write to us. Our email is carriercenter at vu.lc. Uh, thank you all for being with us today uh, and have a nice evening. Can I jump in quickly also? So uh, it might be that I haven't answered all the questions that you sent uh, prior the, the, the session. So feel free also to write to me your question again. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can write it through the LinkedIn. You can connect with me and I will definitely answer the question. So it just might be that the question got lost uh, and uh, don't hesitate to approach. I'm happy to answer. Thank oh. you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Ruta. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.